In this video, I want to take you through the step-by-step -step process using this motor mount assembly to attach virtually any motor to a Simo Series linear actuator. First, let's start with an overview of the Simo Series linear motion platform. It's a versatile, flexible set of uh, options that you can choose from, beginning with the profile height. There's a low profile and a tall profile for more structural integrity. And then it goes on to bearing options. You have the choice of the Freelon Gold line bearing, plain bearing, great for uh, areas where you don't require lubrication. Or there's a V-wheel option with the steel inserted raceway here. Again, notice it's the same profile, same height. And uh, this is great for high speed, low friction applications with the V roller bearings. There's also then a profile rail option. Beyond that, then there's the drive options. Choose a lead screw or a uh, low profile vertical belt option. Or you can do a tall profile with a more traditional looking horizontal belt. And uh, so there are many options here. And really the Simo Series linear motion platform gives you a range of those options. Now in this video, we're going to concentrate on how to attach a motor. But the original design has an integrated motor. Here you'll see the motor attached directly to the pulley housing uh, for this vertical belt drive. There's no coupler in between, so you get a very rigid connection here. There's no backlash or play at all from a coupler that would be in between there. Same thing with this design with the lead screw. No coupler, you get the integrated screw that's actually laser welded directly into the motor. So there's direct alignment. The result here is you have pre-engineered alignment so that the screw is right on center with the motor and then there's no play from any connection with a coupler or a gearbox or anything like that. So that is the original design of Simo Series. To get the full picture of the Simo Series platform, you can download this catalog as a PDF from our website. And right inside the front cover, you can see those options detailed out here. The profile height, the different bearing options, different drive options. And then as you go through the document, you can get the details you need for making the proper choice and then specifying the correct actuator for your application. There are cases though where a integrated motor is not the best option, but you need to attach another motor. Uh, maybe a stepper of your own or a smart stepper that you know, we're seeing more and more of these because of the ethernet based communications, or maybe a servo from Almron or Allen Bradley or others. The motor mount option for the Simo Series linear actuators makes that a very easy process. You can download this document as well off of our website as a PDF. And inside here, you'll find the details that we're about to walk through step by step. Here, what you see are two actuators. You see a lead screw drive and a traditional horizontal belt actuator. And uh, you'll see some very common things in the two setups here. But I want to start by talking first about the stub shaft output that comes from the actuator here with the uh, lead screw and then also with a, a low profile version that has the belt in it. Here the standard stub shaft is going to be five millimeters. For the horizontal belt, you'll find a standard stub shaft of 10 millimeters. Other than that, you're going to see a lot of the same components. You see this part here is a mainframe that attaches on, on the belt drive directly to the pulley housing. You'll see a motor mount plate, and then you'll see a cover and then the motors. The only difference you'll notice here is this plate here. This plate is for the screw driven actuators only, and it allows uh, a smooth connection for the mainframe to the actuator. So now let's go through assembling this lead screw driven uh, actuator step by step. Right, we're going to begin by attaching this uh, plate to the actuator with the lead screw here. You'll notice this ring here. It's designed to fit right into the end plate so that you have built-in alignment right there, just naturally right in place. Now we recommend for every screw or every fastener, every bolt here, that you use a breakable thread locker. Now, I'm not going to do it in this demonstration for time's sake, but every connection should have this breakable 
a thread locker of some type here. That way it lessens the effects of vibration, holds things in place over time. So, all right, we're gonna connect this plate on here. The next step is to put the mainframe in place. Once you have the mainframe in place, then it's time to put the coupler on. And uh, this design was built around an RNW EKL05 coupler. Now, you can use other couplers as long as they fall within a 25 millimeter OD maximum and 26 millimeter long length. And then you can match up your stub shaft diameters uh, on the ID of the, or the uh, coupler, but uh, it's built around the R&W EKL05. So we install that on here, slide that on our stub shaft into place and lock it down. Okay, now we're ready to put in place the motor plate. Now, we're using here, in this case, we're using an Applied Motion product, Smart Stepper. This is a NEMA 23, so I have a plate that's designed for that NEMA 23 motor. Now, in the document that I mentioned earlier, you'll see here that we have four different plates that are standard, or a 40 millimeter, 42, or the NEMA 17, 56 or the NEMA 23, and also a 60 millimeter standard. But there's also a blank plate that you can get where you can machine into it your mounting hole pattern for whatever motor you may have. And then also you can machine it flat or uh, narrower for uh, to accommodate different stub shaft lengths and what's needed in the coupler there. So those are the motor mount plates that are available. Process is very simple. You'll notice the flats here on the mainframe and then the flats here these tabs they actually line up and drops right into place that gives you your pre-engineered alignment so that you your motor will mount directly in line with the screw so when we put the coupler on first locked it down we know it's in line with the screw so next we'll put this plate on lock it into place then we'll put our motor in with the stub shaft into the coupling and lock the coupling down first. That way we know that the motor shaft is in line with the coupler and with the lead screw. Now that we have our motor plate attached, I'm gonna come back and first slip the, uh, the motor into the coupler, put that in. And before I lock down the motor here at all, I wanna make sure that shaft is in alignment the stub shaft of the motor is in alignment with the stub shaft coming off of the screw right into the coupler and I want to lock the coupler down first. So I tighten that down while I'm holding the motor up against that plate. I lock the coupler down and that way I have my alignment locked in place. Now I'm ready to lock my motor into the motor plate. So there it is. Simple connection, pre-engineered alignment, so I don't get any camming or lobing because the center line of my motor is off from the center line of my shaft. I have a process and I have components that help hold that alignment in place, extend the life of the system. And you have a very clean system and we have a cover, pops on right into place for protect that coupler design. And there we have a lead screw driven system with a applied motion product smart motor, very simple connection. Now I'm gonna go through the same process with a belt driven system with the 10 millimeter stub shaft here. You'll notice one major difference. This plate that we needed to attach to the lead screw driven system is not here. So here I can take this uh, 
mainframe and attach it directly to the pulley housing uh, with no problem. Again, I'm not using the thread locker to speed up the demonstration here, but remember when you're going through this assembly process, it's best to use a breakable type thread locker on all of your fasteners to lessen vibration, the effects of vibration and those kind of things. So now I have my main frame in place. Again, I'm using an R&W EKL5 coupler. Slip it on here and lock it down. And it's a matter of having the right motor plate, in this case for a NEMA 17. Line up those tabs, drop it into place, and lock it down. Once I have that, then I want to uh, install the motor. Make sure that it's in place and then lock down my coupler so that I again maintain alignment between the pulley shaft and the motor shaft. Okay, so now we have our motor in place. Again, lined up with that pulley shaft so we have a very clean assembly again a cover to protect it so here we have a very easy simple step-by-step -step process that can adapt virtually any motor to a Simo series actuator you have long-lasting performance with a range of bearing choices and then pre-engineered alignment between the motor and whatever drive mechanism you choose here with the Simo Series Linear Motion Platform.